Hey guys, Simon here from Simon Says Cycling. Recently I spent some time in Boulder, Colorado and I went to visit Training Peaks. If you're not familiar with Training Peaks, they are the leaders in training software for endurance athletes and coaches. I've been using Training Peaks for over 10 years now. It's my preferred platform to deliver my training to my athletes. And also if somebody buys a training plan from me, they're going to get it in Training Peaks and they're going to be able to log their training in Training Peaks, even with a free version, a basic edition. So while I was there in Colorado, I met with the head of education, Dave Shell from Training Peaks, to ask him a few questions to help you guys learn a little more about the um, potential of Training Peaks for you and your improvements. How to evaluate Training Peaks, what are the benefits of the free edition, and so on. So in this first interview, I'm going to ask Dave Shell, firstly, what is the free version? What are the benefits to you to sign up for that version? I'm also going to ask him about what are some of the metrics you can use, some of the charts to evaluate your improvements over time? And finally, in this interview, I'm going to ask him about normalized power versus average actual power. Which is the better number to evaluate a performance on? So up next, my interview with Dave Shell. First of all, thanks so much for sitting down with us. I know you're a busy guy just back from Amsterdam training people in Europe, so really appreciate that. So I have a few questions here. Some of them are from my clients. And uh, we'll start with the first one. Somebody who's not familiar with Training Peaks, never used Training Peaks, I know you offer a free version, a basic edition. It's free. Um, it's your account for uh, forever, I, I believe. Can you tell us what are the benefits for somebody who doesn't use Training Peaks to start with that free version? What are they going to get from that free version? Yeah, so with the free version and its most basic Training Peaks is a calendar. So it's a way for you to... Um, plan some training. So if you wanted to say plan a ride for an hour, you could put that on there and then you can go out and record it either on a device like a Garmin or something like that or even um, there's a few apps we work with too such as the Wahoo app. Then once you upload it, it will go into Training Peaks and that day will um, change color based on how close you were to the plan. And So if you were within 20% of the plan, it's going to turn green. If it's over or under by more than 20%, then it's going to to turn yellow, and if it's over or under by more than 50%, then it will turn red. Um, the reason we do that is just to give you some feedback and let you know how you are doing compared to your plan. Um, once you're ready to kind of take the next step, then we offer training plans or we can match you with a coach, um, and really so you can get that expert instruction um, to help you meet your goals, and that's really what we're all about here at Training Peaks is helping athletes to achieve their dreams and reach their goals. Awesome. So I know many of my clients, um, they start sometimes with basic, but most of the time, you know, they'll upgrade to the premium edition. I believe it's 20 bucks a month, but you can get it for like, I think just over a hundred dollars a year if you pay yearly. Um, for those of you, those are my clients and those people are using the premium edition. What are some of the metrics or some of the charts that they can look at to really evaluate whether they're improving over time? Yeah. So, um, as Simon mentioned, that when you upgrade to a premium account, you get some things that you don't get with a basic account. Um, probably the biggest thing is access to more of the charts. And one of the big charts that we have here at Training Peaks is what we call the performance management chart. And what that performance management chart does is that every day you go out and log a workout, it gives you a score based on how long it was and how hard it was. And then as those days go by, um, we start to build a chart for you to show you your training load and um, essentially your fitness and your form on any given day. And so that's probably the biggest chart that you can look at that will show you consistency and um, just kind of building up that training load over time. The other charts that I might recommend is um, the peak power chart if you're training with a power meter. And that will just show you your best um, peak powers at different durations over time. You can compare that and say, let's say if I wanted to see the last 90 days versus the last year and see if I'm improving there. There's also the fitness history chart, which will show your um, peak powers at different durations for the last four weeks and then also for the last 12 months. So that's a great chart to go and see if you're improving or not. And then finally is the power profile, which is showing you your power to weight ratio in order to get that to work, you need to enter weight as a metric on the calendar. So you just go to your calendar, click the plus icon on a day, and then enter your weight there. And then on that chart, it's going to show your power to weight ratio. And that's a great one to look at 
how is your power improving? And so let's say that your peak power maybe hasn't improved at a given duration, let's just say 20 minutes for example, but you've lost some weight. So that power to weight ratio is going up. So that's improvement there too that you might not see if you're just tracking peak powers. Awesome. I know some of my clients, they, they also like to look at normalized power versus actual power. And you were mentioning earlier that you don't really want to look at normalized power anything under 30 minutes. Um, can you let people know, like, what in, in your mind, what is the best way to evaluate performance? Is it normalized power or is it actual power? Yeah, so um, as Simon mentioned, we've got normalized power. And really what normalized power is, is an estimate of the metabolic cost if that ride would have been paced perfectly steadily. Um, but if you've you know, if you're training with power, if you ride mountain bike especially, you know that your power is not always constantly steady. Um, and so that normalized power is showing you what the metabolic cost would have been if you would have ridden um, perfectly steady. So really when you're looking at a ride, the things you want to look at for durations less than 20 minutes, I would say look at the average power because that's going to be much more reflective of what you've done. And normalized power just isn't going to be quite as accurate for 20 minutes or less. Now once you get up um, above 20 minutes, say 30 minutes, 60 minutes, then you can start to put a little bit more stock into that normalized power number. Um, and that will give you a better idea of how hard that workout was. So I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Dave Shell. Some great information there. Make sure to watch part two of my interview where we're going to dive a little deeper in some of the metrics and some of the numbers that we see when we pull up a specific workout. Things like intensity factor or IF, TSS or training stress score, EF, VI. Some of these abbreviations you may not be familiar with. We're going to dive into more deeply in the next interview coming up. So make sure you check that out. And again, I want to wish you all the best of your cycling and thanks for watching.